Percy is like agreeing with Thalia about about not liking them taking Bianca away because he knows that something is something weird is happening, but he doesn't know what it is. And then Thalia immediately like switches to just yelling at him about Annabeth that it's somehow his fault. Um, yeah, and and I have to say something about that because that that seems like projection one hundred percent when you consider that she says, "Had we stuck together, who was the girl who danced away, Miss Talia?" Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's oh my god! So this 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 statement goes out to every golden child who has not gotten help, like my wonderful co-host, like best friend here. If you are a raging asshole, whenever somebody talks to you, no one is going to go to you with anything at all. Exactly. If you go and talk to somebody, if every time you talk to them, they cut your head off and make you feel like a horrible person. Like, I know like last time I said like, Percy's gonna blame himself. And then in this chapter, he's like, Annabeth getting kidnapped is my fault. And I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> like, And so he's already thinking that it's his fault, that his best friend is being tortured by people who wanted to torture him. Instead, the last thing he needs is you yelling at him about this because you don't have a better coping mechanism. Exactly. Like when I was reading this, I was like, find a better coping mechanism than yelling at somebody when you don't have control of the situation like i don't know how one of the things that people argue about with salia sometimes is like oh what is her fatal flaw control mm -hmm. control like people talk about sometimes oh percy sometimes wants control no no thalia is a control freak like she sits there and screams at him. Why? Because she didn't have control of the situation. She yeah. says, oh, if you would have just come to me, I would have been able to handle this better than you and everything would have ended up being fine because I'm better than you. No, there's absolutely no guarantee that the situation would have been better if she knew about it because when they were all outside fighting, she didn't kill anybody. She, she fought the monster, nobody died. Like the monster didn't die. The monster still lived after you fought them. So it didn't matter in the end if you knew about it beforehand or not. Like it doesn't, especially in this situation because they were trying to kidnap Percy. Like no matter what, they would have gone after Percy alone in some way. Mm -hmm. And so it's like what, it's very similar to things that happen when they're at camp in however, I, I don't know when that is. So, but eventually we're going to read it where something happens between them at camp that is literally the exact same thing where she blames him and screams at him and other things besides that because she's mad that he didn't follow her plan because she's convinced that if he did that everything would work out the way she wanted. There is no guarantee that, that it actually isn't, isn't true. Like we'll talk about it completely when we get to that chapter. But I reread it before we even read these books and I kept seeing people talk about that and, and blame it on Percy and say that he was the one in the wrong. And I was like, no, she's the one in the wrong here. She's acting like if she wants to do something, her plan is going to work because it's her plan. And yeah. everyone else sh should just have to like go along with what she wants because it's what she, that's not how any of this stuff works. Like that's not how you get along with people is by making them afraid of you that they never, that they don't like, he's like she sits there and screams at him and he just stands there because it's like what do you he he can't say anything mm -hmm. like if she attacks him like that when she's when he's agreeing with her he can't say anything at yeah. all without her like somehow her being like oh you're trying to be a big tough strong man and do everything on your own and it's like what about him makes you think that he's that sort of person like he saw two children being kidnapped and was like, I should probably stop them. Yeah. <laughs> That's not about ego. <laughs> and it, um, I always remember this one interview that Walker Scobell did where he, he said something about how Thalia and Percy are a good example of how Zeus and Poseidon like never get along. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I've never thought about it like that before, but he was definitely correct about that, that they show how 
they're similar, but not really. They're like actually extremely different. There's so much to confirm that when you think about it, because you can think of Zeus as a golden child in a way. He's the one who got saved from getting swallowed. And mm -hmm. because he's the one who got saved from getting swallowed and got raised, you know, and um, supported as he was overthrowing his father, he's king of the gods. But that is a very precarious seat because one person got castrated and got thrown off. The other person got cut up to bits and put in Tartarus. Um, so, you know, all it takes is somebody trying and succeeding to like physically overthrow him for him to be conquered and no longer have his seat of power. Um, and yeah, Talia, she's, she's kind of treated in this book already as if she's more powerful or somewhat more capable than Percy when she's literally been a tree for the past four years. Is the thing I was trying to say, but I didn't really say it right to me, at, at least in my head, I didn't think I said it right, is that hierarchies like this make everybody helpless. Mm -hmm. Like if there's one person at the top that everyone just like goes to for help, that one person ha is the one that decides everything, but it means that everyone else is just kind of sitting around not doing anything. Mm -hmm. And that is a dynamic that happens in like dysfunctional slash like abusive family systems is that one person runs everything. And yes. so nobody knows how to like say how they feel make any decisions at all like we have been in therapy forever because we don't know how to make decisions about our own lives like who we are as people what we want to do with our lives our jobs like i don't even know what food i like like i try food sometimes that i think i don't like because i don't even know if i actually don't like it anymore yeah. and and like the basic level things and so that same thing is happening with the kids at like at, eventually we'll get to camp where we see that happening at camp but it's also just happening in these small situations where everybody is so dependent on Thalia that they all just don't do the things that they normally would do. And it leads to things like this happening. Like if people were not being so dependent on only her and they were thinking for themselves, like why did Annabeth run off to get Thalia when she noticed that they were gone instead of like, you know, figuring out something else? Like she's the smart, like at least intelligence wise, she's the smartest one out of all of them. Mm -hmm. She can figure things out on her own. But yeah. even her, she was like, I need to go get Thalia. And it's like, why? You don't actually need to go get her. You're your own person. And before she showed up, you remembered that about yourself. Yeah. And now that she's here, everybody is becoming so helpless and just like falling back onto old patterns. And it's why I love this. Like this book is difficult. Like. <laughs> When Thalia yelled at Percy, I literally like closed the book and set it down next to me for like 15 minutes before I kept reading it because I was so like triggered and upset because that's happened to me 5 million times in my life. <laughs> and so, um, but even though it's difficult, it's the, I love it so much because it's the natural progression of the way that this world is set up, that things like this would happen this way. Mm -hmm. And so it just... It's like, this is exactly what would happen. Like if you set up a world where one person is at the top and everybody else doesn't know how to do anything, this is like one, like the smartest girl in camp is going to get kidnapped because she feels like she doesn't know what she should do. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, that is exactly what would happen if you make everybody feel, feel helpless so that they can all like suck up to daddy Zeus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, um, and I can say from like experience taking some of that golden child accountability that when you do have all eyes on you, it is a lot of pressure and it is like, I have to live up to this thing. So when you don't, it feels better to blame somebody else than it does to actually say, oh, wow, I fucked up. Um, and especially because there's the feedback loop of you're usually praised and you're usually told you're so great and fabulous and smart and cunning and you you do all the good plans and so she's like i do all the good plans i do all the good it's percy's fault yeah. <laughs> she clearly thinks that because she is zeus's kid that she is like she should be getting this attention she should be the ones that people are going to because i get like the golden child thing that it's the role that she has but she still wants to have that role she's not like trying to argue against having that role
yeah. as opposed to the way that Percy argues against everything ever that anyone ever tries to get him to do. Yeah, and it's it's hard to step back and let somebody have the spotlight sometimes. It took me going to therapy for me to be able to do that for my brother. I There's hope for Talia because she's young. You know, like, I'll say that. And I do think she does ultimately step aside and let Percy take the reins. But, yeah, it's it takes a while for her to realize she's not the best person. And this responsibility that's being put on her is also unfair to her just as much as it is to Percy. I'm not even sure she ever actually realizes that. She just kind of is like, I don't want to do this. Peace. <laughs> and, and like, yeah, she has immortality. She'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully she does. As Either way, when she's not like, you know, there anymore, she's a lot nicer to him. So that's at least something that she's not around as much. And so she doesn't she doesn't treat him nearly as bad like past this book because i don't know why she just maybe she doesn't care as much anymore after she doesn't have to deal with it anymore 